Hello and welcome to the 27th episode of The Route, our school bus fleet content series. I'm Wes Platt, Executive Editor. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to recap some of our recent top stories on school bus fleet. Be sure to follow us on social media, click like on this and all our other videos, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. Your comments are always welcome. If you get a chance, share where you're from, who you are, uh, and post that in our comments. That way I can give you a shout out in a later episode. Okay, let's get rolling. Our first stop is Albuquerque, New Mexico, where State Rep Bill Ram once again urged his fellow legislators to consider requiring seat belts on school buses after a news station shared police video of a car crashing into a school bus at more than 100 miles per hour, sending students flying around the interior of the bus. Seven of the 23 students on board and the bus driver were sent to the hospital with injuries, including fractures of the pelvis and femur. Despite the lack of seat belts, the solid construction of the bus probably helped prevent far more serious injuries in the collision. Rame co-sponsored a 2019 bill that would have required seatbelts on school buses in New Mexico, but it died in the Senate Education Committee. Do you think seatbelts should be required on school buses? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Our next stop is Denver, Colorado, where a state Senate bill would allow rideshare companies that offer school transportation options to contract with the school or any other political subdivision of the state and puts them under a regulatory framework that applies to similar, similar transportation. The bill's supporters say that it gives schools more transportation options, which they need, but advocates for children with disabilities worry that the bill doesn't include enough provisions to ensure children's safety. The bill calls for safety provisions to be handled in any contract as determined by a local school district. Critics think that all school transportation regulations ought to be managed by the state education department. How are school transportation rideshare operations managed in your region? Let me know in the comments. All right, now let's stop in Brooklyn, New York, where student transportation provider First Student is poised to expand its operations by acquiring Total Transportation Corporation. TTC provides general and special education student transportation, paratransit, and charter services throughout New York City, upstate New York, and Philadelphia. The company operates 15 locations and a fleet of nearly 3,200 buses with more than 100,000 student passengers in the New York metro area. The acquisition still has to go through regulatory approvals, but it's expected to finalize this summer. All right. Our final stop is Washington, D.C., where the U.S. Department of Energy announced $3.1 billion in funding from the bipartisan infrastructure bill will go toward manufacturing electric vehicle batteries and components, such as those used in school buses in the United States. The money is expected to help U.S. manufacturers build new factories or retrofit existing plants. The DOE also dedicated $60 million to support second life applications for EV batteries and processes for recycling materials back into the supply chain. These steps are all meant to support President Joe Biden's goal of EVs making up half of all vehicle sales in the U.S. by 2030. Okay, it's time to park the bus for now. Just wanted to say a quick thanks to viewer John Bonitz for sharing his thoughts in the comments about the Clean Start Ahead episode of The Route. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell your friends about The Route. The more the merrier. Reach out to me by email at west.platt at bobbit.com. Send me story ideas, thoughts, comments, anything you want to let me know about. Tweet us at School Bus Fleet. Drive safely and see you next time on The Route.